Hey guys, I sure come out today and watch your realms. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you all here. Today, I'm gonna give a, a quick rundown of my picks for the top three damage dealers in every single faction in the game, because who doesn't love a good nuker? Who doesn't love a good nuker in these games, right? This is the second part of a two-part video uh, coming from a viewer request, so keep the viewer requests coming in the comments below, guys. I do read them, and I really love when you share your best ideas that you'd want to watch with me. Kid Mutu uh, says, hey, Ash, this might be a long one, but what about best damage dealers and best support for each faction? Well, again, we've already done the support. Now let's talk about the nukers. A shout-out to my man, now, go figure, he's the best nuker in the unnamed faction. Wouldn't you believe it? Ajax, we surveyed the competition, and you were our final. You were top three, you were top two, and you were top one. I actually really love Ajax. I talked about this guy a lot here, so I'll just keep it brief. He costs a lot, but he's really good. He's got burning, good DPS, and a good debuffer, and you can use him in every single faction trial in the game. Gear Raid 1, you name it, he's a beast. All right, so let's start with a wash guard here, guys. And again, uh, some of the feedback on some of the recent videos is... Ash, we don't need you to read their entire kits uh, every video, bro. Just talk about, you know, why you like them briefly and what they do. So I'm going to try to do that in today's video. You guys let me know, though. Do you like the rambly Ash where I really get granular on these heroes? Or do you prefer some of these videos just move uh, with a little bit more alacrity? You know, let me know in the comments what you like, what you prefer. Uh, and if you want to see me talking a little bit more, go to the last video, the first half. I'm going to give you both sides of what this could be in the future of videos like this. Anyway, the watch guard. If, if a, if a hero belongs to two factions, by the way, I'm only going to consider them once, or I'm only going to pick them in, in one of the factions. Anyway, the Watch Guard doesn't, isn't filled with a ton of amazing, amazing nukers, at least compared to the other factions out there, but I love Allura. She's the invisibility queen. She's really good, you know, for example, on the right-hand side in Gear Raid 3. She does some really nice damage. She's not an S-tier damage dealer, but for a marksman, she definitely puts out really nice damage especially if you build her you know with obviously great gear and I, I feel like that applies to pretty much every hero in the game when we're talking about damage specifically she doesn't cost a lot and she gets the job done again she's great for anti-air and invisibility so gear raid three uh and anywhere you're going against a lot of air units I would take a look at Allura all right number two guys is going to be None other than Alistair. We haven't talked much about Alistair since he was one of those guaranteed fragment whatever uh, heroes in the game. Here, the long story short on Al Alistair is, is like a lot of the Arbiters, he is coming in with true damage, ignoring defense off of his abilities. He's not the strongest Arbiter in my opinion, but he's still pretty dang strong, okay? The only downside though is the cost. He's really pricey as is the case with a lot of Arbiters at 25, but again, he has both continuous and true damage. He's pretty dang good. He has the Radiant Erosion, which is pretty cool as well. You can stack it with other Erosion radiant erosion heroes in the game and just get that to stack to maximum stacks which usually triggers you know additional stuff in their kit as well so alistair definitely makes the list here uh and then for number three we're gonna take a trip down to the epics there's not a lot of epic heroes in this video uh iona was in consideration by the way i really love iona i'll give an honorable mention here or there throughout the video same thing with brianne brianne and, Io and iona I put them as top epic damage dealers in the game. They're in the conversation. They're both top 10 for sure. Uh, but we're going to go with Idril, right? Idril really, truly, marksman, mages, you name it, right? For epic heroes, she is on the same level as legendaries. She she really is. She's used on almost every endgame account that has her, which most do, their endgame accounts. Uh, she's just amazing. I mean, not only does she do really nice damage, uh, but obviously with the limitless shots, she can shoot anybody on the entire entire battlefield if you get her all the way to awaken five you're basically extending the duration of the limitless shots on every kill to make it you know not never ending but pretty dang close to she's extremely powerful i don't know if she's my favorite epic but she's definitely up there in the game not just damage dealers just overall she's that good you guys probably already know that time to go to the north throne a dude that i don't have but it's elder i wish i did man this dude looks like a monster right he does damage based on his shield you can see right in his talent here when shield it deals extra damage equal to 30 percent of the current shield strength 
He only costs 17. He's a fighter, by the way, as you can probably tell. He has the Thunder Aegis, gains a shield on his uh, his ultimate here, equal to 10% of his max HP, stacking up to 100% max HP. That's 10% per second. So it really ties in beautifully with his talent. He does more than that too, but it's really all geared around damage. Shields and damage on this dude. The best part is he's a Lord. And honestly, I love King Hars. I own King Hars. But this dude puts King Hars to shame. He's a fighter. King Hars is a defender. But he's a pretty tanky fighter. He's got 30k base HP as well. And with those shields, he has some self-sustain built in. I don't know. No shots fired at King Hars. I love you, but... Your heat has made you powerful. With the same kind of Lord uh, shield ability as well. Ooh, I wish I had Elder personally. Either way... I apologize. King Hars is like, dude, you're not even talking about defenders. Leave me alone, bro. Next up is going to be Nocturne. Still one of the better DPS for single target in the game. He also has true damage, good burst damage. You see him in a lot of top guild boss teams. You see him in Void Rift. Uh, he's a beast in, in uh, Gear Raid 2. He's a beast in, in, in Faction Trial, obviously. Uh, really, really solid uh, mage. Solid single target and true damage mage. Next up, guys, we have... Might as well just get her out of the way. This is a tough uh, faction because because honestly, I love a lot of these damage dealers. I like Falsia, I like Maul. I look at Maul as a bit more control than damage. I really like Voroth as well, uh, but obviously it's Ardia. I mean, Ardia by a mile has the highest attack in the game. Almost 8,000 base attack. That is absolutely insanity. And she just does incredible damage as well. Great range. She is my favorite fighter in the game. Uh, she's just absolutely insane. She's one of the few heroes that you pull in this game, and she's just an account carry for you because you can use her absolutely everywhere and just count on amazing damage no matter where you use her. Nightmare Council. Okay, so this is the trickiest out of all of the factions because they're all damage dealers for the most part, right? Hatsu, I'm just going to start with my favorite, and it's Hatsu. Uh, she is a low-cost marksman. Uh, she's got that amazing, amazing ultimate ghastly burst that does well. Yeah, burst damage. Tons of it in a 360-degree radius as well. One of the strongest arena and just basically everywhere uh, nukers out there in the game. I love Hatsu. Gear Raid 3 arena void rift it just again pretty much everywhere campaign you name it hatsu's my go-to girl amazing burst damage and she has invisibility as well on the ghastly stealth so kind of like an amped up damage version of allura uh a bit different too in the kit uh but overall she's one of the top marksmen inside the entire game one of the most wanted marksmen inside the entire game all right this is where things get crazy now luckily on some of these heroes we can talk about them in other in other factions so stay tuned before you freak out if i leave your favorite off the list okay we're gonna go with arrogance uh arrogance is nightmare only so perfect time to talk about arrogance he's got that great range he's got burning people call him kind of the jack of all trades master of none i think that doesn't do him justice in a weird way way because he's very close to master of all trades you know what i'm saying like he's better than a jack is what i'm trying to say about arrogance they call him anti-air they call him burning well he can target air as a fighter right so he's anti-air he's got the burning he's great against uh, a guild boss he's great pretty much everywhere fits into any nightmare team uh just amazing damage very very versatile and then last or third, I should say, in no particular order. Lust, of course, Lust. I mean, she's one of the top guild boss damage dealers in the game. I'd, I'd say top five in the game. She fits into every guild boss team, but more importantly, she kind of fits in pretty much everywhere. She's an absolute beast. Uh, I know a lot of you guys went for her. Let me know if you did. Let me know what sort of impact that Lust made to your account if you are lucky enough to have her. So yeah, Lust is, uh, she's looking she's looking good and she's doing good in the game as well, right? So those are gonna be Hatsu, Arrogance, and Lust. Again, we'll talk about more of these as we go on as well. So do not panic. However, a quick honorable mention, I love Abomination. He's just, uh, again, talking about a hero who has amazing base stats, over 30k HP and almost 6k on the attack. I love him. I love Wrath, honestly. And this is not a joke, like putting Wrath in the conversation. I really think he's 
he's that good. I think he's almost underrated because he's free, right? And people undervalue free things, I feel like, in general, psychologically. Salazar is probably the biggest in the conversation over an arrogance uh, or a lust, I guess. Uh, I chose arrogance or lust in Hatsu over Salazar. Uh, I think that Salazar is a little bit less versatile than the others, Arena and Guild Boss. That being said, I mean, you can really go either way on any of them, right? Let me know if you put Salazar personally over Arrogance and or Lust on my list. Let's move on to the Cursed Cult, guys. We have Vierna, right? Let's go with the, the super obvious. One of the strongest mages inside the entire game. I definitely put her top three in the game. She has this unbelievably strong execution dynamic in her kit. She has Mortal Kiss on her basic attack uh, that deals continuous AoE damage. So even though she doesn't have the AoE on the A1, it feels like she has the AoE on the A1. She has, that, again, that insane execution and 700% AoE damage on the Reaper's Grasp. All instantaneously, boom, dead. Uh, she's just one of the strongest pure burst damage mages inside the entire game uh no doubt about it we have cerberus cerberus is good man he's he's a really cool guy i mean you're probably familiar with him he kills himself right he's very good in the arena but he's good in other areas as well you know some immortal codex bosses for sure uh he's a bit different right reduces the the hero's cost in the arena by uh two here the uh evil anointing though reduces the, the hero's first deployment cost by six upon his first death reduces the next deployment cost of every killed Ally, allied mage by one so he ends up being very cheap and you just basically cycle him he kills himself and he kills everybody else right with this water of decay you've seen content on cerberus very i wouldn't even say niche just different different type champion and he's really cool and again he does a, a heck of a lot of damage uh this one was tough uh, you guys know that I asked for a buff on Zealous, to the dismay of a lot of you guys. I still think he's one of the better uh, cultists in terms of damage dealers. However, I actually went in, in Aatrox. Massive shout out as well. I love Aatrox. Kind of like a mini version of Cerberus. Uh, but I'm actually going to go with Uridin. I don't have him, but golly, I wish I freaking did. This guy looks like an absolute boss. And from everything that I hear from you guys, he is a damage dealing machine. 6,100 on the base attack. That's a really strong base attack. He has the Phantom Strikes and the Potent Surge. Uh, basically, his talent is bringing extra AoE damage. He's bringing 100% AoE damage to five enemies on his basic anyway. And then he has stun. He has control. He has more AoE. Uh, this guy looks insane. He really does look insane. He's chaotic. So he has the HP going down, damage going up dynamic as well. As the reduced cost in the arena to about to 15 instead of 20. Man, he's... Uh, He's something. He's something. Is definitely on my most wanted list, as I've already said. Infernal Blast Time. Uh, now, this is a tough one. <laughs> this is a tough one. Because, let's be real here. How do you not go for... I'm going to have to. I'm going to just pretend there's a tie, guys, because, I mean, there's some excellent choices. Even an epic excellent choice here. But uh, let's just go with the obvious, right? So, Cadence is unbelievably strong. You're familiar with him in the center of the arena battles, in case you don't have him. He's great in guild boss. He's great single target damage uh, with his focus fire. But unlike a Pyros, his focus fire, he's not... Uh, it's all about him dealing more damage, uh, not everybody else, right? Same thing with uh, Pyros and Twin Fiend. Uh, that's why Pyros and Twin Fiend do not make the list. Uh, they get more damage out of everybody else, but we're talking about actual damage dealers themselves. So Cadence is in a league of his own. He's amazing. Speaking of leagues of their own, yeah, Hex. I mean... He could be magic damage dealing marksman, costs 12. He's so freaking good. If you can get him like A1 where you can have the fool, he deals 500% damage three times. Uh, he gets a lot even more powerful than he already is, which is insanely powerful. The Joker, when you can get him awakened, he's so good. He's so cheap. Man, he's a lot of people's main damage dealer for guild boss. Speaking of main damage dealers for guild boss, Zillatu, obviously. I mean, there's no way I cannot include Zillatu or Hex or the next one that we're going to talk about in this list as well infernal is loaded there's a reason that infernal is the meta for guild boss basically since i've been playing the game right uh now on zilla 2 
charges energy after three seconds of not dealing damage uh so basically this this ability empress might it synergizes with a twin fiend in a pyros where the focus fire she's not doing damage so she's charging up off of her passive that's why she is the highest damage dealer potentially inside the game against guild boss depending obviously on your team and your comp but this is why she can pull off the highest damage in the game record setting zillatu uh cetrum I mean, this guy's an absolute tank. They say he is a, uh, Setchum is a walking armada of destruction that is absolutely accurate. He is, his ultimate is like, I don't know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger mode, just tearing everything up. He's insane. I love me some Cetrum. So there we go. I cheated. That's four for you guys from Infernal Blast. Star Piercer's time, guys. Uh, okay, super easy. Silas. For my money, Silas is the best damage dealer inside the entire game. Number one on our entire list, it's Silas. Uh, I got him pretty late compared to the other champions that are the heroes that we talked about in today's video. But man, him with the soul sniping, him with the, uh, with the ignore defense... I mean, you just put it all together, just nobody hits like Silas. He is just busted, just disgusting, just absolutely nasty. Uh, love me some Silas. He's a hard carry everywhere in the game. We already talked about Hex, so that's covered. Uh, Aracha, probably my most wanted or second most wanted Lord in the game. Uh, not only is she a Lord who has an amazing Lord skill, you know, the increased range, especially in gear rate three, but really everywhere. But Aracha actually deals some really nice poison damage along with her control. She brings so much to the table that it's really insane when she attacks and unblocked targets, increased damage by 20% and crit rate by 10%. Uh, she has attacking airborne units, excuse me, a la like an arrogance ability. This hero evolves, increasing damage by 40 percent and hitting one more target for 20 seconds under the spider stance she's got spider toxin she's got poison she's got aoe damage she got continuous damage as well she's got ensnare for control oh man i really want aracha and then number three gets really tricky there's a few really good options here and really beauty is in the eye of the beholder here because i all honestly i think i would tear all these champions out as like in a it's somewhere in the b plus to, to a range right and that is calypso nyx uh maybe not absan quite that high but i actually like absan uh kai and razak and uh sargok so sargok might be the right choice here uh, but I have a massive soft spot for Nyx. She's costly at 22, but her range is second to none. And her ultimate, Spinning Fire Blade, the AoE damage that this can put out is just insanely nasty, right? Gear Ray 3, she's my favorite for the left pedestal in Gear Ray 3. Uh, she's great in Tide. She's great at basically anywhere that you need a marksman with insane range and really really nice damage out of this spinning fire blade uh ultimate she's really good i slept on her for a long time i did not uh respect what she brought to the table and boy was i wrong on that historia guys all right so <laughs> i want to give a shout out to raiden he's not on the list but he is a lord and he does deal really nice damage okay so i you know i want to shout out the epic hero there on the list when they're around uh however he costs two much for me to justify uh <clears throat> recommending people invest in him however we do have some easy choices here as well uh comet <clears throat> one of the best uh, mages out there in the game certainly comet vierna the next guy that we're going to talk about uh, a lot of people would pick them as top three mages certainly top five mages in terms of damage dealing he's kind of the ultimate uh or excuse me the the opposite ultimate as a uh, vierna we talked about vierna with the immediate execution well he has a festering curse that lasts 15 to 20 seconds it makes it it feels like it lasts half the battle you know compared to these immediate execution mages out there it's a lot of damage for a long sustained amount of time he's a really good well it says it right there continuous damage option for your team he brings curse to the table as well and then he has a bounce after he kills a target comet is amazing so they nerfed or reworked boreas but he's still an absolute boss Still one of my favorite mages in the game. Eternal, yes. Ice Haven, excuse me. He's got the AoE Ice, the AoE Freeze. He's got the AoE Insane Damage. And just everything about him is all about burst damage everywhere. I mean, he has anti-healing.
controlling dynamics with a chilling blow. But all you need to know about him, do you even need to know anything about him? Well, I sure don't get it from you. Last here is going to be, there's a few epics I like down here, but uh, it's Thalen. It's Thalen. Uh, he's a fighter, damage dealing fighter. There we go. Kind of like a, a, a Valkra in some ways. Uh, so he has AoE damage though. He has 50% uh, damage up to five enemies two times on his A1. Each basic attack has the equivalent, or excuse me, has a chance equivalent of 50% of the current rage percentage to turn into a luminous strike, which deals 240% damage to up to five enemies, okay? Now on his ultimate, it's a long one. I won't read the entire thing, but it gives magic resistance minus 20, which is great. And then all kinds of big damage, 560% damage to eight enemies, and then a 300%, and then Gungnir, excuse me, which I think is his weapon, will return to him after that. It's pretty nasty. Uh, really good in the arena. Very good in the arena. Dam increases damage in the arena by 15% on that passive. Uh, he's bringing stun as well. Uh, I hear he's a really good magic damage dealing fighter out there. Can't wait to hopefully get my hands on him sometime. All right, chaos time, guys. Uh, let's start with Lagaru. Lagaru is, he looks kind of like uh, Vlada. Eh, maybe not that much, right? A little bit, a little bit. These werewolves all look the same a bit to me. Anyway, this guy is insane when we're talking about like that multi-strike quick damage. Specifically in the arena, he can wreck increased damage in the arena by 15%, as you guys can see. Uh, he is chaotic, as is, are all of these uh, fighters and, and what we talk about. Actually, they're all fighters, actually, today. They're dealing more damage as they kind of uh, die, usually by their own doing as well. Uh, but Ligaru has some really, really nice burst damage uh, potential. We've already done Ardia. Uh, we've already done the Cerberus, so don't get offended that I'm not including them. Uh, I do want to give a massive, massive honorable mention to Vladov. I really love Vladov, and the guy who I'm going to pick in his place, you could argue that Vladov might be better. But before we get to any of that, Valeria, right? We did not choose her for Nightmare because we were saving her for Chaos. Uh, Valeria's just insane i mean she's very very good a lot of damage very high base attack which is always a good sign uh obviously she has the unyielding as well uh so this is really helpful because as you know chaos as we said three times now they can kill themselves you got to be careful of their hp you can leave them very susceptible to enemies as well unyielding mitigates that right we get some hp recovery as well as not dying unkillable essentially from a lot a lot of damage from valeria one of the top dps fighters out there inside the entire game and then last we're gonna go with i know it's gonna it's gonna be a surprise to some of you guys but admiral claw that's right admiral claw what do they say about him oh the reverse are not as bad as i thought they were gonna be he has increased penetration by five percent for every ten percent hp loss up to thirty percent penetration is ignored defense in this game in case you're unaware and but he deals a lot way more splash aoe damage for a fighter than i was expecting man like, he, that big cannon, he's just like, just evaporates everybody in front of him. Uh, I'm a big fan of Admiral Claw. Didn't think I was going to be, but man, I, I was impressed. Arbiter's time. Obviously, Praetis. Praetis has uh, continuous damage, true damage, damage escalating, you name it, he has damage. The coolest thing about Praetis is, honestly, though, is the Lord's kill, right? Basically, he has this ability that you can trigger. It's an auto, it's, I'm sorry, it's a manual trigger. You can decide when to use it. Uh, you don't even need to play him, similar to like a King Haas or whatever, that he just he just does stuff, or Venoma. They just do their Lord skills, uh, or Aracha, anybody else, right? Uh, but this is a damage dealing one that you, you trigger. You get to decide when to use it. And it just does damage to everybody. <laughs> whenever you want to and it powers up right so really strong he costs a lot this is only downside he does a heck of a lot of damage he's one of the most wanted uh mages in the game next up hey valkyra valkyra is weird because she's she also she's the only hero that made the list on best supports and best damage dealers that says a lot, right? She's the only one that was on both videos. Uh, she's great. She's great. She has a magic debuff on her basic with AoE damage, okay? Uh, she can deal a nice amount of damage. What is her base attack anyway? Not too bad, 4,200, but she also she also can revive okay uh and then she has the reduced cost in the arena i said it in that video i'm going to say it again she's really one of my favorite fighters in the entire game i really really love valkyra i'm not saying she's the best 
she's really good. She's my main DPS in, in Gear Raid 2 as well. Uh, like Gear Raid 2 21, you know, she's my main DPS right there because of her range, you know. Uh, Artifact Material Raid, you name it. She's just so freaking good. And then last is going to be Pelagios. I would never forget about him. 22 uh, costs, so again, a little bit a little bit high. However, he's uh, summoning Tides for 12 seconds that deal 200% true, true damage to targets in range. He has Radiant Erosion as well, so you can stack that up and get even more damage. He has AoE damage on his ultimate. He's got AoE damage on his basic. Yeah, he is on the battlefield. I've been more impressed with what I've seen Pelagios, excuse Excuse me than I have from Praetis personally however Praetis is more I would say in demand because he's the Lord and again that that this broken Lord ability either way they're both unbelievably good and again some of the most wanted heroes out there in the game also some newer additions to the game so there it is guys that's my top three damage dealers in every single faction in the game what do you think who did I snub who did I miss and who do you not agree with my selections let me know in the comments below much love and as always take care guys